about the Turkey. We are interested in developing this part of our cooperation. And this year we all witnessed and today minister also expressed his gratitude for this, how quick Russia reacted to the request from Turkey to help with um, overcoming the natural disaster. Along with the help provided by the Russian Emercom to help after the earthquakes in February, we responded to the request from our Turkish friends to give Russian airplanes the 200 CS to help with the forest fires at the Asian shore. We also talked about the regional affairs, including in the Middle East, in North Africa, in South Caucasus, Central Asia, the Black Sea region. And we also considered the tasks we face within the context of normalization of the Syrian and Turkish relations. As you know, at the 20th International Asana Forum at Summit in Kazakhstan, July this year, we talked about this. We have reached certain agreements and today we discuss next steps on assisting Ankara and Damascus to restore diplomatic ties and to develop full-fledged cooperation. We stand for deepening cooperation in other areas. We talked about deepening relations in other areas, including in South Caucasus, and we stand for normalizing relations between Turkey and Armenia, and also for implementing all the previous agreements that were reached between the leaders of Russia and Azerbaijan and Armenia starting from November 2022 on deblocking the transport routes and communications and the post-conflict restoration. We are convinced that Turkey can play a constructive, uh, useful role in these efforts. We also talked in a lot of detail about the situation in Ukraine and around Ukraine including the initiative that are supposed to promote unacceptable ultimatum-based peace formula of Zelensky that is doomed to fail. We explained why it is impossible to rely on the efforts that are done in this regard and they are trying to use these efforts to replace any conversation in earnest on how to provide enhance just and indivisible security that is going to prevent conflicts in Europe. We also obviously talked about the issue that emerged after the Black Sea Grain deal ceased to exist. We explained to our Turkish counterparts our understanding of what needs to be done in the West, first of all, to resume this initiative. As you know, President Putin on a number of occasions officially, publicly, clearly stated that as soon as the steps are taken not to negotiate the Russian part of the Black Sea deal package, but to resolve all those issues that were still pending, not, not resolved, despite the promises from the UN Secretary General. We appreciate these efforts. But as soon as the conversations will be put into practice, into concrete steps, that very day we will be ready to resume the Ukrainian part of the grain deal package. Apart from this, we talked about the initiative suggested by the President of Russia to organize supplies of the Russian grain to Turkey. Of up to 1 million tons at subsidized prices to be processed in Turkey and then to be sent to be supplied to the neediest countries. And we're also discussing in this matter with our friends from Qatar that are ready to participate financially within this initiative. I would like to say that we appreciate independent oriented at the national interest policies pursued by Ankara. We know for a fact that the West is trying to, to undermine this policy in any way they can, because it's a great irritant for them, this kind of position. In this constructive, equal, balanced cooperation with our country, we believe 
that it's mutually beneficial and it's useful for Turkey from economic point of view and to strengthen the sovereign foundations of the foreign policy of the Republic of Turkey. We always try to meet our Turkish counterparts halfway if we talk about the discounts for the fuel supplies and measures try to meet our Turkish counterparts halfway if we talk about the discounts for the fuel supplies and mesh industry due to the flow of Russian tourists and the uh, agricultural produce supplies to Russia from Turkey and I believe that our Turkish partners will reciprocate these steps from Russia despite the pressure exerted by the United States and their allies who want to turn everyone and everything against the Russian Federation. We believe that these attempts will not yield any result. And in this regard, I would like to say that recently President Erdogan, in his congratulations on the event of the Victory Day, he stated that Turkey will never put its independence under threat. We absolutely share the same principles in regard to the Russian Federation. And in accordance with that, we are going to help each other to protect our principled position on the international arena. And our political dialogue and economic cooperation will continue to depend on our mutual willingness to take into consideration concerns and interests of each other, to look for the balance of the interests between ourselves, our Turkish partners. They have the necessary strategic vision. And as we agree today, we will continue to adhere to the approaches based on the mutual respect and the balance of interests. Overall, I believe that we had a very useful conversation. I'd like to thank my counterpart and my friend, please. Thank you very much, Sergey, your media representative. So it is my first time here as a foreign minister. I'm very glad to meet Minister Lavrov. I would like to express my gratitude to our Russian friends for solidarity after earthquake in Turkey for sending two airplanes to help mitigate the forest fires in our country. As is known, our relations with the Russian Federation go way back in the past. Our countries, they, we know each other as well. We have a reliable channel of communication based on the principles of the good relations. Our dialogue is useful for the region and for the international affairs. We have communication channels that can be used at all times and uh, sentiment of friendship and mutual trust between our countries and between our presidents, Mr. Erdogan and Mr. Putin, helps to develop our relations. We discussed important matters, matters of resumption of Black Sea Grain Initiative was the focus of our agenda. We put an emphasis on importance of this issue from the point of view of global food security and stability in the Black Sea region. Russia has its demands regarding uninterrupted grain and fertilizer import. We reaffirmed that it is important to satisfy this requirement and the new package of steps was prepared after the intensive preparation. We believe it can become a foundation to resume the initiative. We also talked about the military operation. It was part of our agenda. Our president reaffirmed that there can be no winners in war and there, there are no losers in if the just peace is achieved. That's why we still want to resolve the conflict by diplomatic means and we are ready to give all the necessary support in this regard. And we are ready to continue 
to play the role of mediators or facilitators in the negotiations last week. I visited Kyiv and I expect similar views there. Dear representatives of the media, soon our presidents are going to meet in Sochi. Our leaders are going to discuss different items on our agenda during this visit. We prepared for this future summit of our leaders. We talked about economics, about energy matters and, and other issues. We held consultations and we also discussed the situation with the Crimean Tatars. And we talked about what we can do to develop our relations. And we also talked about how important the cooperation between our countries to fight terrorism. We also talked about international agenda, especially regarding the Syrian dossier and the situation in Central Asia. In South Caucasus, we compared our views, we explained our views. And in the future, we will continue our consultations with Minister Lavrov. Tomorrow, I'm going to meet the Defense Minister, Mr. Shoigu. And I would like to express my gratitude to Minister Lavrov once again. Thank you. Anadolu Agency, I've got a question for you, Mr. Fidan. The Black Sea Grain Initiative was discontinued as of July 17th. Last year, Turkey undertook some diplomatic efforts to revitalize the initiative. Was there any tangible progress on this issue in your negotiations in Moscow? And what process is in store for us in the future? Please, if you could give us a detailed answer. Thank you very much. As is known, Turkey is making a lot of efforts to resume the grain deal. Our president and our organizations, they make every effort to revitalize the grain initiative, the Black Sea Grain Initiative. And we are looking into possibilities that can be used. So the work is quite intensive, is underway. And we are maintaining dialogue between our ministries. And we can see the process that help us to understand the Russia's position better, because previously they, there were some shortages some shortcomings and not to make the same mistakes again. We are now working on this and we do this to create sustainable conditions. There are certain technical details from funding to insurance. So there are a lot of matters to be discussed. I'm not going to go into details in this regard, but we spoke with my counterpart about this and uh, Presidents Erdogan and Putin during their summit are going to speak about this matter in strategical terms and we spoke about technical matters of this issue and we presented our vision and we are going to present our vision to our leaders. We will continue our work because this initiative, this grain deal from the point of view of food security, and food supplies globally is very important. So we are going to continue to try to keep the, this initiative alive. Russia Today, if Moscow's conditions regarding the grain deal are fulfilled, will there be a return to what was already in place regarding the deal? Or will be there a new format, some new ideas? And. Uh, what other important urgent matters will be discussed during the summit between the presidents of Putin and Erdogan? Thank you. President talked about this on many occasions and he said that as soon as all those promises, as all those assurances 
enshrined in the Russian UN memorandum as part of the package deal, as soon as they are fulfilled, that very moment we will go back to the implementation of all the other things that are listed in the Ukrainian part of the package deal. Minister mentioned about how Mr. Guterres is trying to make progress in this regard. Both me and the president, we said that we appreciate the efforts by the Secretary General. I met him during the break summit in Johannesburg. He talked about the new initiatives. He sent me a letter to this regard. And we said it frankly, we said it openly, both to the Secretary General and to our Turkish friends. There are no guarantees in this letter, only promises, only promises to try to work faster, to be more active, and the obstacle that we face, that the solution to the problem of exporting the Russian grain, Russian fertilizer, these obstacles are set by the West. The UN people, they cannot do anything. They have to ask the West to show common sense to be constructive in their approaches. The West does not want to do this. So far, we can only hear promises. So I can only reaffirm that as soon as we have not promises, but guarantees with concrete results that can be put into practice the next day, then the next day the deal, the implementation of the deal will be resumed in full. Here's what I would like to say also. I think it's quite artificial, mainly due to the Western media efforts. The importance, the significance of this situation after the discontinuation of the Black Sea Initiative. Today we provided the data, statistics of the World Food Program and FAO from the UN, the data from the stock exchange markets, for the grain, there is no food crisis in the world. There is no uptick in prices. Prices are fluctuating, they go up and they go down, but they remain at the level that is not higher than the prices were in 2021. And in addition to this, like I mentioned before, President Putin has guaranteed that that part of the Ukrainian grain that was sent to the neediest countries during the time the Black Sea Initiative worked, that was less than 3% of the total Ukrainian supplies. We are ready to compensate this part completely. And in this regard, in addition to what he said during the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg, where he talked about six poorest African countries. He promised to give up to 50,000 tons of grain, and we're ready to pay for the shipment as well. And in addition to that, now we are discussing this initiative where we are ready to supply 1 million tons of grain within the context of the Russian-Turkish-Qatari potential project. And as for other topics that President Putin are the one are going to discuss, well, you know, it's up to the presidents. They are creating their agenda, so it's not our place to anticipate it for them, to talk about it instead of them. Thank you.